Good morning. Welcome to Robinsdale Parkway. It's good to see everybody. Um, we have 20 people at a retreat, the retreat that my grant helped pay for um, this weekend at the ARC Retreat Center. So um, that's why we're looking more sparse. And apparently, the people who made the bulletins didn't do a great job on it. They thought, oh, they're going to be gone, so not enough other people are going to be here and didn't make enough. So you may need to share bulletins. Um, Dick, were you able to make a few extra? OK, good. Thank you. So today's a special day. We have uh, Reverend Laura Kanata uh, preaching today, which is great. T. Michael is staying. We were both up at this retreat uh, for the whole weekend. I came back last night so I could be here for service today. Next week is disability, not disability, excuse me. Next week is the Youth Sunday talking about their mission trip out at Pine Ridge. And so again, T. Michael and I will both be there for the retreat, and he will come back for that. So um, it, it's a great time. Uh, unfortunately, the uh, Watry family, um, who joined us online half a year ago, both came down with COVID, which is quite serious for Jim, the husband. And so they would like our prayers, and that also made them not able to come to next week's retreat. So we do have two openings. If you want to come, it is experiential. It's not your average pray, quiet, scripture retreat. It's more uh, drumming, circle dancing, clay, um, forest meditation, and I am forgetting something else that was cool. But anyway, um, it's a, a fun time, and if you're interested, the grant enables people to go for free, and so we have room for two more if you'd like. All right, we'd also like to this week welcome um, Arlo and Virginia, who just moved here from Elk River in the back there, and they're visiting us today. <laughs> Happy to have them. And um, Keith is back. Where are you, Keith? After his being robbed and assaulted. Thank you. He said he missed all of us for those who were not able to hear him. And um, thank you to all of us. And he's so glad to be back. Thank you. And I'm sorry we didn't have a microphone right ready for you, Keith. But I'm glad you're, you're OK. Also, um, that reminds me, we have Pilgrim Guild this Tuesday at noon. Um, Carol and I will be talking about our once in a lifetime trip and showing. Uh, Ashley was able to help us get the pictures on Google Slides. and. We're making um, Swedish and Scottish desserts. So uh, you are welcome to join us on Tuesday. Pardon me? This Tuesday at noon. Yep. Um, then, let's see what other announcements we have. Pilgrim Guild Out to Lunch Bunch is not this Tuesday. It's the following Tuesday, the 18th, at um, Lindy's on County 81 there. And um, that's about it for announcements that I have. There's other people. And so please come up and. State your name and um, tell us your announcement. And if you have an announcement and you're not able to walk to the microphone, please um, raise your hand and we'll bring a mic to you. Good morning. Carol Anderson, the Faith Community Nurse. I have three announcements. First, the flu clinic that usually was run by Hennepin County Public Health is no longer offering that to community community sites. So I did put a message in Living Waters, but um, if you didn't get that, just make sure you schedule that for yourself with your primary. Second, the ACD, the defibrillator, has new pads that are not outdated, and they're in the machine just outside the door. And coming up, probably, I'm not sure when, T. Michael, we're going to schedule how to use it. And third, um, for communion Sundays, I would like two or three volunteers to work with me about setting up communion so that um, I'm not the only one doing it. Thank you. OK. Anyone else with announcements? <clears throat> sure, great. She is coming up. Oh, I'm Char Mertz. And I'm Ashley. And we're putting together a craft extravaganza on November 5 as a fundraiser. We have met a lot. Um, we have done a lot of measuring. We have 35 spots for vendors. They're 8 by 10 foot spots. 
They're $35. If you need a table, it's $40. And if you have a favorite chili recipe and would like to make some chili for us to sell, that would be awesome. Um, if you like to bake and want to make some stuff for a bake sale, that would be awesome. And we really just, we want you all to come and help and in whatever way you can or walk through and buy something from one of our great vendors who would be here. And so just, it, it's going to be a really good time. It is. And <clears throat> Dick Larson's sitting right in front of me. We're going to have walking tacos, dear. <laughs> um, Clarification question. Mm -hmm. Can you tell us the difference between this and our silent auction thing that our church does? Um, Lyle? <laughs> this is a good segue into our next announcement. So, oh. oh, is this the next announcement? Oh, okay. So Lyle can explain that. Um, we also need some volunteers. If you can volunteer, like, to sit at the bake table or to help serve chili, um, Chloe Berry, my granddaughter, has offered to do some walking tacos, but it would be awesome if other youth want to come and help. So, Steven. Yes. Steve? Other youth, Stephen. It's November 5, and it's from first Saturday in November. It's from 9 to 4, but we're going to allow vendors to come and set up Friday afternoon after 4 o'clock. Okay? Thanks. It's your turn. You run away and leave me? Oh, do you want me to stand here with you? I'll stand here with I'm, you. I'm Lyle Latzik, um, and the difference with the um, craft fair compared to the silent auction, the silent auction is just you know, individual items or you know, dinners, whatever, donated by members of the church, and we are the only ones that are you know, bid on the items just to you know, raise money, whereas the craft fair is numerous vendors that go around to, or you know, people to various locations and sell items that they specialize in making. So are we doing a silent auction this year or no? Yes, yeah, the silent auction um, items are due by the 23rd, or to let us know what, we, what you plan on donating. And then the bidding- 23rd of October. October. Okay. okay. And then, it's, then the bidding will be, is it the 30th, the 6th, and 13th, I believe are the dates of the bidding? Whatever those Sundays fall back yeah, and Ashley forth. Says yes. Okay. Yes, yeah, so, so the items are due by 23rd of October, and then we'll have the bidding on the, 30th, the 6th, and the 13th will be the final day of bidding, and you'll, you'll be able to, whatever item you buy, you can pay for and pick up and take home with you. Excellent. Um, vendor set up, vendor sign up sheets will be, be available to me from me, good Lord, from me um, starting on Tuesday. For and the silent auction? No, for the craft extravaganza. Okay. There's a whole lot of stuff going exactly. on here. That's okay. We're really organized, honestly. Um, I, and I'm your contact person, because Ashley is very busy doing so many other things. Email me, finance at rpucc.org, and I'm going to give you my phone number. Text me. It's the easiest way to get a hold of me. 612-845-0294. And I am, uh, it's my home number in Breeze. So. All right. Thank you. Two things going on. It's going to be really great. It will be, but it's going to be fun. It is going to be fun. You can, for the Southern Auction, you can talk to myself, um, Carolyn Handel, or um, Karen Montez. And Shara is also part of the committee, but she's running this, so she's kind of off to the side on this right now. Yeah, but myself, myself, Carolyn Handel, or um, Karen Montez for right now. Or, you know, let Shara know what you, if you want to donate something. All right, thank you. My goodness, that was a lot of information. Um, <laughs> other announcements? <laughs> This is um, Disability Awareness Week, and so I'm just letting people know that. Last spring, we, um, Laura spoke on um, Mental Health Sunday, and someone asked us what the difference is, so that's what that difference was. So we're happy to have Laura with us all the time and uh, preaching today. Let's segue into prayers. Uh, we have prayers of gratitude for Keith's continued healing and his presence with us today. What else, or who else, or what other situations? Hi, I'm Lola May. Um, an update on my friend, Steve Moy, that was gonna have a kidney transplant on Tuesday. Believe it or not, he's fine. He's out of the hospital on Friday. <laughs> Amazing. 
but still keep praying for him. He's got, you know, some recovery to do. And secondly, I'd like to ask for prayers for my granddaughter in Sioux Falls. Her name is Molly. All I'm going to say about that right now is she was the victim of domestic abuse this past week. She's safe at home with her dad, my son, in Sioux Falls. But please pray for her. Thanks. Laura, is your, can you turn your mic on? Or I can just come over here and you can use mine. Okay? Okay. Great. I'd like prayers for my grandfather, please, my Papa John. He has, um, he had COPD and then he got um, COVID and now he's got congestive heart failure. Oh my, okay. Thank you. We will pray for John, her grandfather. Pardon me? Or he doesn't have COVID anymore, but he got it, and that triggered congestive heart failure. Okay. Terry, we're so happy that you're back. I come every now and then because I'm traveling so much, but this is my home church. But prior to this, uh, I went to another church for a long time. And two members, Val, um, is suicidal off and on a lot. He's 92. He's lost some visibilities. Um, it's tough. His, his kids are in England. Uh, just prayers for him. My husband does a lot of work with him. And then Charlene, who had a ruptured intestines and peritonitis. She's in her mid-80s with dementia and still doesn't want to eat, still doesn't want to walk. And the kids are trying to clean the house, sell the house, and get her in a better situation. So for Val and Charlene, getting old was not an easy thing. And just keep them in your prayers. Thank you. We will. Any other situations or people we should pray for? Thailand, for somebody shooting up a daycare. Any other things? Of course, the people with the hurricanes. Anne? So I'm Ann. Our next door neighbor, Sheena, uh, lost her dad four years ago to lung cancer that went to his brain. Um, she's really been grieving that hard for these four years because he was fairly young and she's fairly young. Um, then a few weeks ago, her grandma died, and then within a week, her mom found out she had cancer and died. Um, she had lung cancer that led to her went to her brain. So. I pray not only for Sheena and Ben, but I pray for those of us who are trying to be there to support her, to have the right things to say and the ways to support. Thank you. Thank you. Justin. I want to ask two prayer, prayers for um, some of our students. One, we have, I have, a new, we have a new student with, um, who has disabilities who's really struggling to figure out how to make that work with her schoolwork, so um, we really want her to succeed. Um, and the second is a celebration. I have a student who's a UCC pastor in Alabama who's um, building a community farm to help grow food for their neighborhood. And they've had a run of people who are very conservative in the neighborhood who keep showing up to the church to help, saying, I don't agree with anything you're doing, but I, there's something happening here um, at this church, and so we want to help out. And so he said, you know, he just wants continued prayer that, that they can reach people in the neighborhood who may not agree with the church, but who are... Uh, to keep that as a peaceful and positive positive situation, keep that energy going. So I mean, his name is Ryan. Thank you. Hi, I'm Nancy. I'd like to, re oh, I'd like to request prayers for my best friend. She lives in Alaska. She um, called me very upset. She's been working with her husband who's going downhill with Alzheimer's. And um, it's getting very frustrating for her. And she is the most upbeat person I've ever met. I mean, nothing gets her down. But now she's down. So prayers. Thank you. OK, well, let's just pray for a moment. We thank you, God, for the many gifts that you have blessed us with. We are surrounded by goodness. And in our lives, there is also pain perhaps anxiety or fear. We thank you for your loving presence within us and around us. Amen. All right. 
And let's continue. Good morning. Um, please rise if you are able and join me in the call to worship. God of love, help us realize the love you have for us. God of love, wonderful creator, wonderful creator, God of humanity, Blessed are you who bear the light by Jan Richardson. Blessed are you who bear the light in unbearable times, who testify to its endurance amid the unendurable, who bear witness to its persistence when everything seems in shadow and grief. Blessed are you in whom the light lives, in whom the brightness blazes, your heart a chapel, an altar where the deepest night can be seen that fire that shines forth in you, in unaccountable faith, in stubborn hope, in love that illumines every broken thing it finds. Thank you. Well, I know Edward and the Peterson boys are not here because their parents are at the retreat this weekend. Orion is here. Do you want to come up? We would love to have you. Not to have the whole focus on poor little Orion. <laughs> oh, Stephen, aren't you a good guy? Thank you. We can, we can, you can sit down wherever you want to. You can too. <laughs> so today we're talking about how everything that God made is so special, like holy. Your mom and dad are like God. Oh, thank you. Okay. My microphone, okay. Your mom and dad are like God. Yeah. yeah. And your grandma, great grandma, and your folks, and your friends, and people who love you, like me, 
are also like God. And everything God made is really, really good. What's some of your favorite thing that God made? People, says Stephen. Mom's happy, that's good. Trees, trees are really good. And you have a really good dog, too. Yeah. And do you like to play in the grass? In the park, I remember that. Yeah, and the ground and the earth. And that's the whole idea today is that everything that God made is so good, and we are one of the best. Not the only best, but we're one of the best. That's it. So let's pray. Thank you, God, for making everything, and especially for everything being good, so good. Amen. Alrighty. Thank you. There is Sunday school today, although actually, you know what? You don't usually go, do you? And neither do you. So this might be it, because everybody else is, their parents are at the retreat. So I think we're set, but thank you. Well, we don't really, we don't, um, Orion's a little too young, and Stephen's a little too big, so there you go. <laughs>
Our scripture reading today is, the first one is from Psalm 139, verses 13 and 14. For it was you who formed my inward parts. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Wonderful are your works that I know very well. And our second reading is from Genesis 1, 26 and 27. Then God said, let us make humankind in our image to be like us. Let them be stewards of the fish of the sea, the air, the birds of the air, the cattle, the wild animals, and everything that crawls on the ground. Humankind was created as God's reflection. In the divine image, God created him. All of humanity, God created them. Good morning, everyone. Humans, each and every one of us, were created in God's image. Not some, not a few, but all humans. No matter what skin color, no matter what gender, no matter what ability, no matter what sexual orientation, everyone, tall, fat, thin, young, old, skinny, black, white, male, female, everyone, are fearfully and wonderfully made and are good exactly the way that we are. All bodies are beautiful, and yet many bodies, many people are ashamed, and many people shame certain bodies. How and why is this? I would say it is the concept that we now call ableism. In a narrow sense, ableism is all about disability. It is biased and prejudiced externally or internally against people with different abilities, just like racism is biased and prejudiced against people who are not white. But there is a new definition of ableism that I found written by Talia Lewis, who is an LGBT person of color who coined this disability justice definition. Now bear with me, it's a little long one, but I'll sum it up after I read it. Ableism is a system of assigning value to people's bodies and minds based on socially constructed ideas of normalcy, productivity, desirability, intelligence, excellence, and fitness. This leads to systemic oppression which leads to people in society determining people's values based on their culture, their age, their language, their appearance, their religion, their birth, and it goes on and on and on. You do not have to be disabled to experience ableism according to this definition. In summary, ableism is about which body minds are valuable or less valuable. So anytime you assign value or lesser value or more value to a certain person, that is ableism. In Western societies, white bodies are often deemed more valuable or more human. This, in turn, by ableist and racist math, makes non-white bodies less valuable and thus easier to treat them as less human. That's the problem when you have a body type that is less valuable to society then it is easier to mistreat you. In ancient Greece, women were essentially disabled by society because the definition for women from a Greek philosopher was deformed men. Monstrous. We had, you know, our bodies were different, therefore we, we weren't quite human. This would be sexist, but it's also ableist because this deems female bodies as less human or less valuable than male bodies. Same thing goes for people of different sexual orientations, different genders. You know, people get so hung up on things, on, on definitions and things, that they forget that the person they're talking about is an actual person. 
In Nazi Germany, people of different religions and ethnicities were deemed less valuable to the extent of a pseudoscience being invented to determine pure racial qualities, i.e., the ideal bodies, the perfect human form. This is tied into productivity and capitalism. Disabled people were exterminated many years before the Jewish, Roma, or gay people under the guise that they were useless eaters, i.e., they took from society but did not measurably produce for society. So this is all a thing about value. What are you giving? What are you contributing? If you don't contribute the way I want you to contribute, you are less valuable. These are all isms, racism, classism, sexism, and they all become internalized. You see them out in the world, and then it becomes a part of who you are. Even if you are not brought up hearing explicit messages of ableism, racism, homophobia, the implicit messages are everywhere. They're in education, they're in advertisements, they're in the movies you watch on TV. These messages are repeated over and over and over to the point that they become ingrained in our personal social muscle memory. And you don't even know it. It's, it's like subliminal messaging. It's not like people go around and say, I hate this group. Of, some people do. But many people don't go around saying, I hate this group of people. But they use coded language, like that neighborhood's unsafe. Because, and what they're saying is a certain group of people live there, so that neighborhood is unsafe. What we see in social media, what is represented, the stories we tell, create the realities we experience. Example, if you grew up seeing images of white, able-bodied princesses, the black disabled girl never gets to see herself in the role of heroine. This is why people are so up in arms about the new Little Mermaid. I don't know if anyone follows that on TV. You know, they say things like, mermaids can't be black. And this isn't historically accurate. <laughs> I don't want to burst anyone's bubble, but mermaids aren't historical. <laughs> There's no historical accuracy because mermaids are a creation of someone's imagination. If the villains in movies and books always have a scar on their face, or walk with a limp, or have a stutter, how does a young child react to a person in real life who has a scar or a limp or a stutter? If you're five years old and you're watching a movie and the bad guy has a funny looking face and then you're walking down the street and you see someone with a funny looking face, are you gonna say hello or are you gonna hide behind mommy's leg? You're scared. If the movies about LGBT people always end with tragic endings, what message this, does this impart to young LGBT people about their future, about the real life. All of this, all of these messages, all of these isms, all this ableism is why people have shame about their bodies. Why people go around saying, well, I wish I was thinner. I wish I was lighter skinned. I wish I was taller. Um, all these different shames, you know, fat shaming, sex shaming, queer bashing, they're all because some bodies are deemed less valuable than others. Now, as an individual born with a unique body, I have had more time to soak in these messages and to learn to adjust. I have had the time to wrestle with body image and shame and pride. When you get what I call insta-disability, like a car accident, a broken leg, cancer, mental illness, Alzheimer's, anything like that, and you need extra help, you don't always have the time you want to adjust. You are bombarded with thoughts and feelings and words. Useless, crippled, dependent, not good enough, burden. This is what society says about bodies. Too fat, too dark, too pale too skinny, too much. Shame is an inward response to outward messages. Shame about needing help, shame about gender transitioning, 
shame about skin color or body size is internalized ableism. That's why there are hierarchies in groups. The example I have in the little people community, I always go to these conventions every summer, and when I was growing up, you could tell who was the popular little people, and they were the taller, less physically distinguished little people. You know, They had more features like the average height person. And you can see that in groups of people with lighter skinned people of color sometimes are more appreciated than darker skinned people of color because they take this, internalize this ableism and internalize it and build these hierarchies because these people get admired and treated better because they exist closer to the most valued members of society. Shame is a horrible feeling. I read once in a book called Shame, A Faith Perspective, the guilt is I did a bad thing, while shame is I am a bad thing. All of these messages, everything that is the result of that, and the result in shame, they're all lies. Insidious, pervasive lies that make me believe in the devil. Because how else could self-hatred spread so easily and so fast if someone wasn't whispering in your ear all the time telling you, you are a bad thing? Deep down, we know better. We are children of God. Genesis 1, paraphrase, God said, let us make humans in our image, according to our likeness. So God created humans in God's image. In the image of God, they created them. Male and female and everyone else, God created them. And the thing with the, the male and female bit, everyone says, oh, that's why there can't be, you know, different genders. There's only two. It's in the Bible and blah, blah, blah. The thing is, they talk about light and dark in the Bible too, day and night. What is twilight? Twilight is the mixture of day and night. It's the in-between. It's the other. It's not bad. It's beautiful. I think twilight is a very nice time of day. But it's not listed in the Bible because they assume we already know that. Just like the color gray. It's not black. It's not white. It's another beautiful color. And that's exactly how I think God views transgender people. It's just another person on the spectrum. Everything's a spectrum. Psalm 139 says, We were knit together, bone and sinew in our mother's womb. We were beautifully, fearfully, and wonderfully made, each and every one of us. God finished creation, looked around, and called it good. Because creation, humanity, was modeled after God. There's another verse, um, 1 Samuel, where Samuel is trying to find the new king, King David. And he, he comes in front of um, this guy's sons, all these sons. And the first son he sees is handsome and rugged and tall and super masculine and all this cool stuff. And Samuel's like, oh yeah, this is going to be it. This is going to be the king. 1 Samuel 16, 7. But the Lord said to Samuel, Do not look on his appearance or on the height of his stature, because I have rejected him. For the Lord does not see as mortals see. They look on the outward appearance, but the Lord looks on the heart. The Lord looks on the heart. It doesn't matter to God if our feet or features are asymmetrical. For God is asymmetrical. God doesn't care the shade of our skin because God comes in all shades, all shapes, all sizes. God is bigger than any descriptor we can ever come up with. God is beyond gender. We are created in the image of God. Every human being is part of the Imago Dei. Each and every one of us has that spark of God inside of us. Every single one. Even the people we don't like. 
even the bully at the playground, our mean boss, or the political opponent. <laughs> so when you criticize someone, criticize their behavior, not their looks. Not, you know, that politician looks like a balloon, or that bully has a stutter. Criticize, that person's mean. That person says mean words. I am beautiful, and so are you. We are extensions of God put on this world to love and to be loved, to shine brilliantly in all our multitudes and facets. No one is above or below another. So there's no rhyme nor reason to shame or be shamed. The word of God for the people of God. Let us pray. Before I pray for just a moment, I want to ask Kathy Jo, you sent us a text that there was a longtime member of Robbinsdale that I didn't personally know, but that you had seen in the paper that she had died and her funeral was already passed. Could you tell us who that was, please? Lavon Falk. Some people may know her. She, okay, so I just wanted to let people, thank you, Kathy Jo. Well, let us pray. God, we thank you for our bodies, such as they are, and our minds, and our emotions, and our spirits. The goodness that shines through, the changes, the goodness that shines through, the steadiness, the goodness that shines through, the growth, and the goodness that shines through moving on. Help us to know and accept the beauty of all of these stages of life, all of these variations of people, and especially all of these variations of ourselves. And let shame be something that we recognize and toss out the window. Let us not equate our worth with our looks our fears, and our worries. Help us to become more strongly based in our holiness as people of creation in whatever forms and capacities and abilities that shows up. 
help us also know and appreciate you in others. Help us work for justice for the poor, those who are lacking anything, energy, time, companionship, money, status, education, senses of worth. And let us know that as we do this within ourselves, this work within ourselves and in the world, that we are doing your work with you. Amen. Let us join together in the words that Jesus taught us. Our Father and Mother who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. May your kingdom come and your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, now and forever. Amen. Um, the pews, the envelopes in your pews are left over from last week, Neighbors in Need, which is um, one of the five United Church of Christ offerings throughout the year, and this goes for people experiencing tragedies within the United States, which, as we know, we've got a lot of hurricanes. So those who were not able to contribute last week who would like to, please take an envelope and use it. Um, and as always, we thank you for your offerings. We thank you for your generosity. And it's a great way for us to be able to experience the generosity of God, both giving and receiving. Thank you, Cindy. Kathy, do you want me to read this one? Okay, I am offering this gift because I am happy and thankful for Emily Braun and the wonderful beets directly from church ground. So delicious and so appreciated from Patrick and Alex.
Please join me as you are able to stand and share the unison prayer of dedication. Let us pray. Dear God, we give these gifts with open hearts. We give out of love. We give to expand the world's perception of what is truly valuable. Please accept this offering. Amen. Go forth and do not look on outward appearances, but fill your heart with love and good things. Amen. <laughs> 